Welcome back to OpenGL Oversimplified, the series where I break down graphics programming concepts with analogies and examples. My name's Andrew, and here on Get Into Game Dev, I make tutorials on various programming topics, mostly graphics programming. If you enjoy this content, you're welcome to get in touch through our Discord server, link down below, or just drop in on one of my weekly live streams. Anyway, on with the show. The topic of today's video is color. To connect this with the last video in our series, um, imagine we're coordinating work from head office, the CPU, and sending messages to the art department, that's the GPU. Probably the simplest message we can send is refreshing the screen. Lots of complicated tasks are being done by different people in the art department, which we can touch on in later videos, but everyone is painting onto one canvas. Refreshing the screen is like telling the art department to dump a fresh coat of paint over that canvas and start new. We'll probably want to do this at the start of every frame. So if the shapes on the screen change, then the ghosts of color buffers past aren't haunting our screen. So we want to tell the art department to splat paint all over the canvas. How do we specify the color? An artist makes colors by mixing base colors in various proportions. And the artists in this art department have only four base colors, red, green, blue, and alpha. Alpha is kind of a weird color. Think of it like adding water to the paint to thin it and make it sort of transparent. In order to standardize everything, the proportions are given as decimals between zero and one, where zero is not including any type of that paint, and one is including the most amount of paint possible. To drive this home, let's look at some examples. Don't worry too much about the code in the rest of the program. This isn't a coding tutorial. Just focus on the GL clear color function. So here as our arguments, we take in some channels. Let's set this to max out the red and do nothing else. And one on alpha is okay, we're not gonna mess with that. There we have it, red screen, nothing else. Let's look at some combinations. So let's go. So in this case, I would be expecting a mixed color, but dominant on the green as we have the largest green component. We run this and yes, that is what we see. And finally, we have another mixed color, but again, dominant on the blue component. We run that, we have a nice sky blue. This is great. We can use it, live our lives and not worry too much. What if we wanna go a little deeper? It certainly wouldn't hurt to understand how the graphics card is handling this message. The most common format for storing color info is in 32-bit unsigned integers. This means that each pixel on the screen is a color which is stored in 32 bits. Since 32 is four lots of eight and eight bits make up a byte, one of the most common formats is RGBA38. Here, each of the components takes up a byte of storage. So the eight most significant bits represent the red component and uh, of the color. Uh, the next eight bits are the blue component, a uh, green component, and so on. Consider the decimal number 4532. This can be decomposed into place value. We have four thousands, five hundreds, three tens, and two ones. Each digit is a factor of 10 compared to the previous. Similarly, a binary number like 42 can be broken down. Or if we were to write out a full decimal or binary expansion, we can say 42 is one lot of 32, one lot of eight, that makes 40, one lot of two, and that's it. So here, like in base 10 maths, each digit is um, a power of two. Um, each digit to the left is two times 
its right neighbor. So yes, um, also note that it's no problem at all to write 42 as an 8-bit number. Because these higher bits are simply not contributing to the number. Okay, computers represent numbers in this way. They're also capable of performing bitwise operations, specifically bit shifts. What would happen to 42 if we shift it one bit to the left? The eights, uh, sorry, the digits double as we move from the right to the left, so the number in total would double. We can confirm this. So we'll take every bit and shift it one to the left. And this bit gets shifted, so there's a zero here, and this new bit is typically filled in with zeros. Then we can compute this. So we have 64 plus 16 is 80, plus 4 is 84, so we have in fact doubled the number. Finally, what is the largest 8-bit number that we can represent? This would come from setting all of the 8 bits to 1, for instance, and I'll just add a ninth bit here. Okay, so here we have it in eight bits. If we include that ninth bit and then compare, this is one less than the number 256. And so the largest eight bit is 255, which is one less than 256. Okay, enough chit chat. For example, let's say we have, make a new page for this. That sky blue color that I did at the end of the last example. So we pass this message to the graphics card and the graphics card or the underlying API sort of breaks down and gets each of the channels. So for red, we have uh, 0.3, that's a scaling factor. So it's 0.3 times 255, which is the largest 8-bit number that we can have. And that comes out to 76.5. It's really up to the graphics card, how they interpret that. Let's just assume we're always rounding down on a 0.5, I guess. And then we need to write that in 32 bits. So. little messy there. Then we calculate the green, which is 0 0.6 of 255, which is 153. And then write that out as a 32-bit number. Okay, then we have the blue, which is 0 0.9. times 255, which comes out to 229.5, which is 230. I think in my example, I messed this up and went with 228. Let's just go with 228, a little bit dodgy, but uh, let's do that. And then finally, we have the alpha which we can see here we have 1. 1 times 255 is 255, and that's very clear. Okay, cool. So each of these numbers has got the channel in it. Then the graphics card will perform bit shifts to get that information into the right position. So let's go from the reverse. It actually doesn't matter how we do this. We take the alpha and we need to apply no left bit shift. So a bit shift it to the left by nothing. And that just gives us the original. Okay. Then we'll take the blue and we'll shift it eight bits to the left because these eight bits 
are being used. So the blue information gets shifted up. Okay, then we'll take the green and we'll shift it up by 16 bits because these lower eight bits are alpha, these next eight bits are blue, and so shift it up by 16. Okay, and then finally, the red is shifted left by 24 bits. So that's taking this information and writing it in. Okay, so once those bit shifts have been performed, we can then sum those numbers together and we can see that the information is in the corresponding spot and adding zero to those numbers will not make a lick of difference. So for the total, we have all of this plus the red. All of this and the only info here is in the green. And then all of this here and the only info is in the blue then all of this and we're just capturing that alpha. And there we have it. That is the 32-bit unsigned integer, which is representing the color at that pixel. This isn't just a theoretical exercise. If you're experienced and a little masochistic, you can do these calculations by hand and write that data out to the screen. Again, this is not a coding tutorial per se. It's an example. Um, in my series, I have video where I go into this in more detail as a little oddity, but let's go through that example before. Um, so we had on the red channel, 76. So we shift that up to the upper eight bits. Then the green channel is 153. That gets shifted up. The blue channel is 228. The alpha channel is full. Let's give that a go. And there we have our sky blue again. And just for fun, we'll max this out. So this should be just red. And there we have it. So there we have it. The, um, the power and beauty of bit level operations. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this little foray into OpenGL color representations and have a great day. Bye.